Christ's name we pray. Praise God. Praise God. The title of the message today is Do Business Till I Come. That is what Jesus Christ told the people when he was preaching his disciples and all those that were following him. He said, do business till I come. That is the New King James Version. In the King James Version, it says, occupy till I come. Occupy till I come. Yes, we find ourselves in times that a lot of things are happening. We find ourselves in, in, in a time where there are a lot of situations. There we're in a pandemic. People are dying left, right, and center but we are still alive. And for the fact that we are still alive, we need to do business until the Lord comes, until we present ourselves even before him as to give account of our lives. The Bible says, for we must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ to give account of our lives, of what we have done in the flesh, whether it be good or bad. So the big title of the message today is do business till I come. And the text is taken from Luke chapter 19 and verse 13. Luke chapter 19 and verse 13. The Bible says there, and I will read, and if you will join me in your homes and wherever you are in the world and you're listening to this message, join me as we go with the Holy Spirit into scriptures. Luke chapter 19 and verse 13. The Bible says, so he called 10 of his servants, delivered to them 10 minas and said to them, do business till I come. I'll read it again, Luke chapter 19 and verse 13. It says, so he called 10 of his servants and delivered, and he said, deliver to them 10 minutes and said to them, do business till I come. I'm going to read the full um, text of what Jesus Christ was saying there in the parable of the king and 10 servants. I'm just gonna read it so that we can get a full context as I go into the message. But our text is being concentrated even in that verse 13, Luke chapter 19 and verse 13. The full context of the message, I will read Luke 19, if you would join me in your home, Luke 19 uh, from verse 11 to verse 27, and I will start from verse 11. He says, now, as they heard these things, he spoke another parable. He spoke another parable because he was near Jerusalem and because they taught the kingdom of God would appear immediately. Therefore, he said, a certain nobleman went, in, uh, went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. So he called 10 of his servants and delivered to them 10 minutes and said to them, do business till I come. And his servant and, and, and his citizens hated him and sent a delegation after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. Verse 15. And so it was that when he returned, having received the kingdom, he then commanded these servants to whom he had given the money. And he called to him, uh, to be called to him, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then he came, then came, the first saying, Master, your mina and ten minas. And he said to him, Well done, good servant, because you were faithful in a very little, have authority over ten cities. And the second came, saying, Master, your mina and five minas. Likewise, he said to him, You also be over five cities. Then Another came saying, Master, here is your mina, which I have kept put away in a handkerchief. For I fear you because you are an austere man. You collect what you did not deposit and reap what you did, uh, what you did not sow. And he said to him, out of your own mouth, I will judge you. You wicked servant, you knew that I was an austere man collecting what I did not deposit and reaping what I did not sow. Why then did you not put my money in the bank that at my coming, I might have collected it with interest? And he said to those that stood by, take the mina from him and give it to him that has 10 minas. But they said to him, master, he has 10 minas. Verse 26. 
For I say to you, that to everyone who has will be given, and from him who does not have, even that which he, which he has will be taken away from him. But bring here those enemies of mine who did not want me to reign over them and slay them before me. That is the context. It was the king, a noble man, that went to receive a country for himself. He went to receive a throne for himself. And the people hated him. They didn't want him to rule over them, and they rejected him. And to his servants, he gave each of them a mina. A mina is considered in those days as three months of wages. Three months of wages, and it was given to them. And he said, do business with this mina. Each of you that received the mina, till I come back to you, and I will give you a reward. Praise God. And God is telling us the same thing. The word of God, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He will always be the same. And the word of God will always come to pass. And every single word, every single iota of God's word, every single period, every single comma of what God has spoken will come to pass. And as he has spoken, this parable unto us is going to come to pass. Jesus has gone to get a kingdom for us. He said he is going. To prepare a place for us. He's going to prepare mansions for us. He's going to prepare a home for those that believe. Those that have accepted him as his personal, as their personal Lord and Savior. Those that have embraced him. He is going to get a kingdom for them. And we should not be like the other people that rejected the king. We should not be like the other people that rejected the king. And people in our days and time are rejecting the Lord Jesus. And God has given us a task. He says, do business. Do the kingdom's business till I come. The purpose of every traditional business is to make profit. If you're working in a company, all the companies around, name them, Amazon and all the companies, um, uh, Walmart and uh, Microsoft, um, all the companies, Google, Facebook, everybody is geared towards making a profit. Businesses exist to earn money. The money they earn is used for the continual expansion of the business. When businesses hire you, they deliver to you the resources that you need to accomplish the requirements of your position. That position they hired you for, they will train you. They will give you everything that you need so that you will perform and do well in that position so you can continue to add value to that organization so that the organization will continue to grow. If you're not adding value, you are cut off and you are made off and you're not part of that company again. As you work in your role, you deliver value to the organization. The value that you provide continues the cycle of any profits for that organization. Heaven is the same way. Heaven is the same way. Jesus has delivered to every human being, every human being, a mina or some kind of talent. God has given every single person, whether you believe him or not, he has given Every single human being on this planet, the 7.3 billion people that walk the planet, God has given every single person some kind of talent that he wants to use. And he's telling us that believe in him, do business till he comes. The kingdom of God's business is the business of souls. God has given everyone, like I said, a mina or some kind of talent. His idea is for you to use that talent to serve him. It's for you to use that talent to serve him so that heaven will profit through that talent, so that heaven will profit via the salvation of souls. We must do business with what he has given to us till he comes. We must do business with what he has given to each and every one of us till he comes. And he wants to remind us about this. This message came to me a couple of days ago on the 18th of this month at 6 p.m. exactly. God told me, do business till I come. That is what I want you and the church to listen to this Sunday. So if you don't invest the resources that God has deposited in you, Please do not hide your mina in a handkerchief. Please do not hide your mina in your pots at home. Please do not hide your mina under the, your bed. 
Please do not hide your mina inside your closet. Please do not hide your mina in any other thing. I advise you to invest the minas that God has put in you so that you can make heaven profit. Because when heaven profits and we stand before the throne room of God, we will also profit like the, ten, the servant that was given a mina and he received 10 and the other one was given a mina and he, he, he traded with it and got five more. We will receive those blessings. We will rule over cities. We will rule over cities. So do not hide your mina. Praise God. So it will not be a pleasant ending for you. Remember the end of the wicked servant who refused to do anything with his mina. He was like also the people that rejected him completely and didn't even want to accept him for his kingdom. So for us to understand the full bulk of this message, we are going to look at several points. We are going to look at several uh, subtopics, and I'm going to call these subtopics for us to understand this message. And the first point is requisition number E2230. Requisition number E2230. Have you applied? And the second point is co laborers with God. And the third point is the work is time bound. The fourth point is how to do business till he comes. How to do business till he comes. First point, requisition number E2230. I know a lot of people will be asking me, what in the world is he talking about? Requisition number E2230. Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 30, if you'll turn your Bible, please. Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 30. The Bible says, this is God. He said, so I sought for a man among them who will make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. God is looking. Just like HR, talent recruiters in organizations are constantly looking for talent. God is looking for wall builders to stand in the gap for him. To, he's looking for gap standards. He's looking for people to serve him in the kingdom of God. So a job requisition is a formal request to fill a, an open position at a company with a backup documentation. So it typically includes the job title, department, field date, and the job description. So God is looking for you to fill the role of standing the gap for him here on earth. He is looking for you, not another person. Do not shift the message he's looking for the other person. God is looking for you for because you have a unique quality about you. God is not a Ryan Xerox machine. He produces all of us uniquely with our different sets of abilities and talents and capabilities and capacities to be able to do his will. So God is looking for you to be a gap standard, a, bra a bracket standard in your own area to brighten the corner where you are. He is looking for people to serve him in his vineyard with the resources that he provides, the resources that he has deposited in you. Have you answered the call of that requisition? Requisition number E2230 is just Ezekiel chapter 22. And verse 30, no big deal on that. Praise God. So have you answered the call of that requisition? Let us look at um, how God and how Jesus is persistent, even with this message that the Holy Spirit is presenting to you today. With this message, he is persistent in looking for people to work for him. Matthew chapter 20 from verse 1 to 7 quickly. Matthew 20 from verse 1 to 7. Jesus tells the parable of the vineyard workers. Jesus tells the parable of the vineyard workers. Matthew chapter 21 to 7. He says, for the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. Now, when he had agreed with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard and he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go in the vineyard and whatever is right, I will give you. So they went. 
and he went out to the sixth and also the ninth hour and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing idle and said to them, Why have you been standing here idle all day? And they said to him, Because no one hired us. He said to them, You also go in the vineyard, and whatever is right, you will receive. Jesus and God will give all the HR gurus of this generation a run for their money in the way he recruits. He does not give up. At every single point in time, he's looking for opportunity to recruit everybody for the kingdom of God. And he wants us to have that same mindset and disposition so that we can do business still. He comes, the business of winning souls. The landowner went out to look for workers five times in the morning, the third hour, the sixth hour, the eleventh, the ninth hour, and also the eleventh hour, seeking for workers, seeking for people to come into the kingdom of God. There is an opening in God's vineyard. Have you answered the call? Have you applied to requisition E2230? God is looking for people to stand the gap. Have you applied? Yes, you apply to your physical day jobs and you're working in your company, all good and dandy. But have you applied? Have you accepted Christ as your savior? If you have accepted Christ as your, as your savior, are you working in God's vineyard? You have trophies to present at his feet. Are you deploying the treasures of God of what he has put in you to do his work in his vineyard? Praise God. Second point. The second point of the message, the first point we looked at is requisition number E2230. The second point of the message is co-laborers with God. Co-laborers with God. And I got that particular part from 1 Corinthians chapter, nine, uh, chapter uh, 3 and verse 9. The Bible says, for we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. We are co-laborers with God. So the good thing about doing God's business and working for him is that he works right alongside you. He does not throw you out there to, uh, by yourself. He walks right alongside you, showing you the ropes of the job, showing you the ropes of what he wants you to do for the kingdom of God. He understands your job description. Your job description, the, the peculiarities based on your purpose and how God has created, created you as a human being and implanted certain capacities and capabilities in you. He understands your job description as a human being. And he is right alongside you, training you. And God, Jesus, will give all the training and talent development people on earth a run for their money because he does not abandon you. He doesn't throw you into the waters and say, sink or swim. So what are some of the things that we need to know about becoming co-laborers with God? I want to cover a couple of points on that. This. We're looking at us being co-laborers with God. The first point I will cover under the second point is I must be about my father's business. I must be about my father's business. Jesus said in Luke chapter 2 and verse 49, and he said to them, why do you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? He understood the business of God. He understood the business of soul. He understood the business of heaven. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. He knew the kingdom business and he wants us to have that knowledge i must be about my father's business second point is my father works so i work i'm looking at certain points that we need to understand that be about being co-laborers with god my father works so i work my father works so i work john chapter 5 and verse 17 but jesus said uh, jesus answered them my father has been working until now, and I have been working. So God in heaven is working, and Jesus, who is also God, is working. So first, he understood the father's business, and he works because the father works. We are working with a co-laborer that is not a lazy person. 
Third point, under the second point, we are co-laborers with God, just like I have mentioned, for we, 1 Corinthians 3, 9, for we are God's fellow workers. I'm reminding you that again. You are God's field. You are his building. We are fellow workers with God. And he understands the business and he knows the business and he is working alongside us. The fourth point to know about working as a co-laborer with God is that God provides the resources. God provides, he doesn't throw you in there without any resources. Just like when you are hired in your role in your organization, if the organization is a good organization, they will train you, they will give you all the facilities and the capacities and things that you need to be able to carry out your role. So God provides, he is even greater. He provides the resources that you need to do your work. Genesis chapter 22 and verse 7 and 8. Genesis 22, 7, 22, 7 and 8. The Bible says, but Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, he said, my father, and he said, here I am, my son. Then he said, look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the bond offering? And Abraham said, I'm sure Abraham must have said in his mind, man, this, my son Isaac, is really a sharp kid. So he said, and Abraham said to him, my son, God will provide for himself a lamb for a bond offering. So the two of them went together and they kept on going. So God provided at the end of the day, at the end of the story, God provided everything that he needed for that particular sacrifice as he tested the fate of Abraham. So God also, in our days and time, God is the master. He will provide the resources that we need to do his business here on earth. God is the one that provides all the resources. What are the resources that God gives us today? God gives us a ton of resources for us to be able to get to know the job description of what we are supposed to do and to carry it out successfully here on earth so that we can receive a reward when we stand to give account of our lives. And some of those resources are, are the word of God. He gives us the word of God. He has given us the Holy Spirit. He has given us the opportunity to fellowship with the brethren. He has given us grace, the grace of communion. He has given us prayer. He has given us finances and resources that he supports us even in our daily needs in all the things that we do. So these are some of the resources that God, there are so many numerous resources that God gives. And the thing we need to understand is that God supports his workers, his co-laborers. And the last point that we'll see in this second point is that God is ever present. Just like I said, he is constantly beside, behind, beside us, working alongside us. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 20, the Bible says, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. He is with us. He will be with us. He will never leave us. And he will continue to supply every single thing that we need to be his co-laborers so that we can execute our purpose and our job descriptions as soul witness based on our purposes and the reasons of our existence here on earth. So the things that we covered in this second point is we must understand the job. I must be about my father's business. Second point on the second point is that my father works so I work. We are co-laborers with God. God provides the resources that we need and he is ever present. Praise God. And, and the third point of the message is that the work is time bound. Just like when you have projects here on earth, they don't, a project is, doesn't have an infinite uh, amount of time that you are working on it. There's always a beginning and there's always an end to projects. And God's project on earth is us. He is working with us as his co-laborers and there is a finite time for us to be able to carry out this work. So doing business for the Lord is not on an infinity clock. It is time bound. And we can see this in John. I'll read some scriptures and we'll move to the last point. So I'm just letting you know the reason is why we need to take this work urgently because we are on a time limit. John chapter 9 and verse 4. John chapter 9 and verse 4. The Bible says, I must walk the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no man can walk. The night is coming. The, light, the daytime is when we are alive. The nighttime is when we are no longer here. So we have a, 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 we have a rope. And it, it, a certain amount of rope of an opportunity to be able to do God's work. John chapter 5 and verse 17. The Bible said, and Jesus answered them, 
My father is working until now, and I have been working. So Jesus is working, doing his work of him being the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, of providing a pathway and a bridge for us to be connected back to God by dying a sinless life so that we can be saved. He knew he had a time limit that he was working. So as his father was working, he was also working. John chapter 11 and verse 9. Jesus answered, Are there not 12 hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. You have lights now. Your eyes are open and sees the light. And you are alive. For the fact that your eyes open up, you are alive. You will not stumble when you are doing the work of God while you are alive. The time of opportunity is now. John chapter 12 and verse 35. The Bible says, then Jesus said to them, a little while longer, the light is with you. So he understood that he had, it was time bound. A little while longer, he will be alive and he will die and he will resurrect and he will go back to God to be uh, our chief high priest in heaven. He said, walk while you have the light. Let darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. We are not walking in darkness. We are walking in, walking in the light and walking in the light of God. Praise God. So that is the second point. Understand, we do not have, we are not working on an infinity clock. The world is, the time is short for everybody. You do not live forever. You have this life to be able to use all the capabilities and the purposes that God has implanted in you for you to be able to execute and do great things for him here on earth. He wants us to do great things so that we can receive great rewards even for him and for ourselves, even in heaven, in Jesus' name. The last point of the message as I round up is how are some of the ways that we can do business till he comes? How are some ways that we can do business till he comes? The first point is doing business by purpose. First point under this point is purpose. How do we do business till he comes? Do business by purpose. Do business by purpose. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. So God understands your manual as a human being. You're a man, you're a woman, he understands you. So you need to understand yourself. You need to go to the maker and say, Lord, if you have, don't already know, what is my purpose here on earth? What am I here to do so that I can use my purpose to serve you? In your purpose, God will execute his own purpose because his purpose is meant to ride on the purposes that he has created inside every one of us here on earth. So we do business till he comes by understanding our purpose. So do business by purpose. So ask God if you don't already know what your purpose is here on earth. The second point under this point is collective. Do business till he comes uh, as a collective as a collective meaning as the body of Christ. And we're going to look at Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25 and 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 12. The Bible says there in Hebrews 10, 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as, it, as, as is the manner of some, but exalting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. The day is approaching, my brethren. The day is approaching. So do not forsake ourselves together. And as a church collective, we work together, joining hand in hand to do the work of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 12, the Bible says that, For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. So we are one body in Christ, and we work as a collective, as a church, to be able to do the work of God. Praise the Lord. So first point, understand your purpose. Second point, affix yourself with the garden of believers and work as a collective to do the work of God as iron sharpens iron. 
The next point is do business through love. Do the business of heaven through love. Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 and verse 30 uh, to verse 39. Matthew chapter 22 from verse 37 to verse 39. The Bible says that Jesus said to them, he says, you shall love. Jesus said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So we do the work of God through love. The Bible says, for God so loved the word that he gave. When we love, we give. So God loved us and he gave us an opportunity to come back to him. That's how he gave his son unto us. And he wants us to do his work in that same, with that same mindset. He wants us to do his work through love. And the next two points, and I end the message. He says, do the work of God by giving and supporting. Do the work of God by giving and supporting. The Bible says in Acts chapter 20 and verse 35. Acts 20 and verse 35. The Bible says, I have shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak. And I remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So we give to support the work of the Lord. We give to support the kingdom of God and to support even those that are in the mission fields as they do the work of God if we are not able to go ourselves. The last point of this message is uh, intercession. I'm giving you ways that we, practical ways that we can do business till he comes back. Intercession is one of them. Doing business by intercession. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17. The Bible says pray without season. And the next uh, point there is James chapter 5 and verse 16. The Bible says confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Praise God. Praise God. And that is the message of the day. And that is the message of the day. God wants us to have this urgency in our minds. He wants us to have an urgency of us using the capacities and the things and the purposes that he has implanted in us to do his will. He wants us first to accept that requisition because he is looking for gap standards. Requisition number E2230, which is Ezekiel 22 verse 30. So I saw for a man, God is looking for you. He's not looking for you. Don't say he's looking for my neighbor. God is looking for you. He wants you to be a co-laborer with him. And we saw all the points that we, that the, what it takes to be a co-laborer with God and he also wants you to know that it is time bound. We are not working on an infinity clock and he has shown us the different ways. There might be other ways, but he has shown us some of the ways that we can use to do business till he comes. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Father, we thank you very much for today. We bless your name, we worship you, we give you thanks. We thank you very much for giving us this message and we pray that you will plant in our hearts that urgency to do your will here on earth. Father, Lord, we accept that requisition and we accept your call. Father, Lord, we, you have sought for a man to stand in the gap to make up that wall. Father, Lord, we are saying, here are we, send us. Lord, we want to be co-laborers with you. And we want to work because you are working. You are not a lazy God. And we will not be lazy in doing kingdom business. Father, Lord, we pray for your strength. Lord, we are praying because we know that the work is time bound and we only have a finite time here on earth before we stand to give account of our lives. Father, Lord, help us in whatever methodology that you have chosen for us to even move to do your business of winning souls before you come. Father, Lord, we pray that you give us this F, the strength and the power, Holy Spirit, and empower us so that we'll be able to do your work, will and your work here on earth. Father, we say thank you because we know you've heard our prayers. Be thou exalted and be thou glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Brethren, have a good week ahead of you in Jesus' name. And may God strengthen you and empower you to do his work in Jesus' name.